Amen. Amen. Jesus, friend of sinners, we have strayed so far away. We cut down people in your name, but the sword was never ours to swing. Jesus, friend of sinners, the truth becomes so hard to see. The world is on their way to you, but they're tripping over me. Always looking around, but never looking up. I'm so double minded, a plank eyed saint with dirty hands and a heart divided. It's the first verse of the song, Jesus, Friend of Sinners. We'll get back to that in a moment. But I wonder if you were to make a final wish, what would that be? Let's say, for instance, you know you're going to die in two hours. What would be your final wish? Yes. I, and I'm not looking for an answer here. I'm just, you know, if you knew that you were going to die, because that's where we're at today. Remember that. It's hard for us to imagine where we're at. We've taken a step back in time this morning with our gospel lesson, right? Because Easter was now five weeks ago, right? So this verse we have to this morning, though, is from Luke chapter 13. And Luke chapter 13 happens when? Before Easter. Specifically when, though? Does anyone know? It's the night of the Last Supper, right? It's after, it's the night of the Last Supper in John. Remember, John doesn't necessarily have the Last Supper. John has Jesus and his disciples gathered together in the upper room. It's the night where Jesus takes off his outer robe, ties a towel around his waist, and washes the feet of his disciples. And then after he takes the towel off, puts his robe back on, he sits down and he says, We're going out. And now I give you a new commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. It's a step back in time. This is before Easter. It's the night before Jesus is going to be arrested, tried, beaten, and then killed. Jesus knows he's going to die. So maybe, just maybe, the new commandment that he gives us, which isn't a new commandment, right? Because love your neighbors as yourself is in... Deuteronomy and Exodus in the Old Testament. Love your neighbor as yourself. I give you a new commandment that you love one another, which isn't exactly the same as love your neighbor as yourself, but semantics, really. We're talking semantics and language. It's the same thing. So why is it new? Maybe it's that added part as I have loved you. Love your neighbor as yourself as I have loved you. Now, is it possible for you to love your neighbor as Jesus has loved you? We won't go into that. But if your last wish, what could your last wish be? There's a story of a five-year-old boy. Actually, he was seven when he passed away. But a five-year-old, Chen, I'm not going to butcher his name, was diagnosed with brain cancer. A five-year-old boy was diagnosed with brain cancer and he was given months Within months, his mother learning of this, she learned out that she had a disease that was killing her kidneys. After two years, both of their conditions worsened. When Chen was seven, knowing that he would soon die, was aware that his mother needed a kidney. He pleaded with her to let him give her his kidney. Remember, he had brain cancer and knew he was going to die. She didn't want it. Pleaded with him. He pleaded with her to to allow him to let her to live. And within two hours of Chen's death in April of 2014, his mother received his kidney. His other kidney was transplanted in a 21-year-old woman and a 26-year-old man received Chen's liver. It was his last wish that his mother would live even knowing that he was going to die. So what is our last wish? 
Jesus, friend of sinner, the one who's riding in the sand, make the righteous turn away and the stones fall from their hands. Help us to remember we are all the least of these. Let the memory of your mercy bring your people to their knees. Nobody knows what we're Nobody knows what we're for, only against when we judge the wounded. What if we put down our signs and crossed over the lines and loved like you did? Loved like you did. Remember, there's three words for love in the Greek. The word we have here to this morning is agape, and it's a couple of different forms of the word agape. It's the verb form and the noun form, right? Because that's the tricky thing. Is love a verb or is love a noun? Yes, thank you. Yes. I love music. Therefore, verb love is a verb, right? But God's love is an entity, is a thing. Right, But the word agape is unconditional love. But in the dictionary, the meanings for the word agape is to have love for someone or something based on a sincere appreciation and high regard. And secondly, it is to demonstrate or to show one's love. So it's to have love for someone or something based on sincere appreciation and high regard. Or to show one's love. Neither one of these definitions have a primarily emotional sense to it. They're not warm, fuzzy kind of words that want to make us, you know, when we think of love, you think of what? It's warm, fuzzy, you get that that butterflies in your stomach, right? That's love. That's not love. Love, agape love, is parents changing the diaper of their children. Right? Right? You do it because you have to or want to for your child, not because it's an enjoyable experience. Someone else has also said that it's the same way on the other end, right? Changing the diapers of your parents. Not because you want to, Or it's an enjoyable experience, but because it's something you do for them. Or living with a parent who no longer remembers you because they're living with dementia. That's unconditional love. It's nothing about warm fuzzy. It's about doing for the other because that's what we need to do. And that's what Jesus is pointing us to in this lesson today. He just washed the feet of his disciples, taking himself from the level of a master teacher to a lowly slave. And tells the disciples then to go and do as I did, to love the world as I did. And what is going to happen? He knows what's going to happen. Where is he going? I could have pointed, but it's not there anymore. To the cross. He knows he's going to die. He knows that this is the end. And he just told the disciples, you are to love one another as I have loved you. So one could think that to interpret Jesus' death as the ultimate act of love enables the believers to see that love to which Jesus summons the community is not the giving up of one's life, but the giving away of one's life. The distinction between these prepositions is important because the love that Jesus embodies is grace, not sacrifice. Jesus gave his life to his disciples as an expression of the fullness of his relationship with God and of God's love of the world. And Jesus' death and love is therefore not an act of self-denial, but an act of self-fulfillment, of living out his life and his identity fully, even when that meant living out to the death of To bring others to Christ, to God. To love one another as Jesus loves us does not automatically translate into us dying for another. Nor does it mean that we have to deny ourselves for others. Jesus did not deny himself. He lived his identity and vocation fully. Rather, to love one another as Jesus loves us is to live a life thoroughly shaped by a love that knows no limits. By a love whose 
whose expression brings the believer closer into relationship with God, with Jesus and with one another. It is to live a love that carries with it a whole new possibility of what community could mean. It's about giving up for the other, not denying ourselves, but showing them who God is and living out his life through us. Or to quote Madeline L'Engle, I hope I didn't just butcher her name. We draw people to Christ not by loudly discrediting what they believe, by telling them how wrong they are and how right we are, but by showing them a light that is so lovely that they want with all of their hearts to know the source of it. Right? Jesus, friend of sinners, we cut down people in your name. When the sword was never ours to swing. Jesus, friend of sinner, open our eyes to the world at the end of our pointing fingers and let our hearts be led by mercy. Help us reach with open hearts and open doors. Oh, Jesus, friend of sinners, break our hearts for what breaks yours. And if we can show people that light, that light that is so alluring and is so lovely that they can't possibly not ask where it comes from, that is what it means to love and to live like Jesus. And that what Jesus is calling each and every one of us into this morning. And can we do it? Yes. Are we going to fail? Yes. But it all happens here at this font, just as Ezra Michael in a few minutes is going to come up here and be claimed and claimed by God. God gives us the power in that gift to follow after him and to live like he did. Showing God's love and mercy in everything that we do. So go into the world and help them to know who we are and whose we are. Because they will know we are Christians by our love.